Okay, so hello everybody, and welcome to day 38 of the 100 Days of Narration Challenge. My name is Edwin Young, and I am today for today's book, for today's, for this week's theme of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Well, day one was Mr. Hyde, day two was Alan Quartermain, day three was Dracula, and day four is going to be be the invisible man or rather the time machine and the invisible man by hg wells um that's all one book but uh we're just going to read the invisible we're going to read a random chapter from the invisible man part um yeah so it's the invisible man by hg wells it's uh, i read this in high school i read like most things I, I i read i read this in high school and uh i remember quite liking this piece of uh pre 20th century science fiction sort of science fiction it's it's uh yeah so one of the classics of invisible man fiction or what have you i don't know again i don't actually have the book for this uh i'm using a digital version it's free from Amazon, I believe, and now I just need to find a passage to read. So we'll read page. I have new idea. God, that's what I get for using Moby. So it's just it's it's weird. There are no page numbers. Damn it! So I can't say. Location 262 of 5,163? What does that even mean? I, 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 I don't know. <clears throat> um, Jeez, I don't know how to do this. All right, you know what? I'm just going to pick a random place because there's no page numbers here. So, uh, and just go from there Um, and read four bits of this because it's not a full page. It looks like half a page. Maybe it's a two thirds of a page. I, I, I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, what's not from here? Yes, I am. Thin air. You're looking through me. What? Ain't there any stuff to you? Boxer. What is it? Jabber. Is it that? What? Hang on. I think... I think there's text errors in this in this file. Crap. Uh okay, that's so that's not a good page to do then. Um What are what are these things? What the hell are these things? Uh Oh they're footnotes. That's not page errors, they're footnotes. Oh okay. Oh oh that's nice. Uh Okay, so it's actually going to, it's actually, um, these, these are actually links telling me what, what it means. Vox et. Vox et is it as, Vox indicates Vox et praeter, praeteria nihil. Di nihil. Praeteria nihil. A voice and nothing behind it. That's in the Latin. And what is, uh, jabber? Jabber. Is it that? It's, it's gibberish. It means, the word means gibberish. Okay, well. <clears throat> Start this from the beginning again. Sorry, guys. Um, first pass. Yes, I am. Thin air. You're looking through me. What? Ain't there any stuff to you? Voxet. Uh, what is it? Uh, jabber. Is it that? I am just a human being, solid and needing food and drink. Needing covering, too. But I'm invisible. You see? Invisible. Simple idea. Invisible. What? Real like? Yes, real. Let's have a hand of you, said Marvel. If you are real, it won't be so darn out of the way then. It won't be so darn out of the way like then. Lord, he said. How you made me jump, gripping me like that. He felt the hand that had closed around his wrist with his disengaged fingers, and his fingers went timorously up the arm, patted a muscular chest, and explored a bearded face. Marvel's face was astonishment. I'm dashed, he said. If this don't beat, if this don't beat cockfighting, most remarkable. And there, I can see a rabbit clean through you, half a mile away. Not a bit of you visible, except... He scrutinized the apparently empty space keenly. You haven't been eating bread and cheese, he asked, holding the invisible arm. You're quite right. And it's not quite assimilated into the system. Ah, said Mr. Marvel. Sort of 
ghostly though. Of course, all this isn't half so wonderful as you think. It's quite a marvel enough for my modest once, said Mr. Thomas Marvel. How'd you manage it? How the deuce is it done? It's too long a story, and besides, I tell you, the whole business fair beats me, said Mr. Marvel. What I want to say at present is this. I need help. I have come to that. I came upon you suddenly. Uh, wait. What I need, what I want to say at present is this. I need help. I have come to that. I have come upon you suddenly. I came upon you suddenly. I was wandering, mad with rage, naked, impotent. I could have murdered, and I saw you. And now there's a there's a footnote for impotent. Okay. Powerless. You didn't you didn't have to. Do people really not know what the word impotent means? That you need to put a a, a footnote for that. Okay. Lord said, Mister Marvel. I came up behind you, hesitated, went on. Mister Marvel's expression was eloquent. Then stopped. Here I said. Is an outcast like myself. This is the man for me. So I turned back and came to you, you and Lord," said Mister Marvel. "But I am old and a dizzy. May I ask, how is it, and what you may be requiring in the way of help? Invisible. I want you to help me get clothes and shelter, and then with other things. I've left them long enough. If you want. If you won't, well, you will. Must. And there's a footnote for must. Really? Okay. Uh. Oh, now I know what page it is because it tells me what page it's on. <clears throat> page one hundred thirty-two. I want you to help me, but you will must. Griffin chooses the unreliable, unreliable Mister Marvel to be his assistant. A hit, a hint of his human fallibil fallibility. Fallibility. Jeez, when he announces he is a man of power, he is interrupted by a sneeze. His true weakness is clear. Hmm. Okay, that's not cryptic at all. Okay. Uh, where? Crap. Uh, where am I? Look here," said Mister Marvel. "I'm too flabbergasted. Don't knock me about any more, and l leave me go. I must get steady a bit, and you've pretty near broken my toe. It's all unreasonable. Empty towns, empty sky, nothing visible for miles except the bosom of nature, and then comes a voice—a voice out of heaven and stones and a fist. Lord, pull yourself to." Together," said the voice, "for you have to do the job I've chosen for you." Mister Marvel blew out his cheeks, and his eyes were round. "I've chosen you," said the voice. "You are the only man, except some of the fools, some of those fools down here, who knows there is such a thing as an invisible man. You have to be my helper. Help me, and I will do great things for you. An invisible man is a man of power." He stopped for a moment to sneeze violently. But if you betray me," he said. "If you fail to do as I direct you," he paused and tapped Mister Marvel's shoulder. He paused and tapped Mister Marvel's shoulder smartly. Mister Marvel gave Mister Marvel gave a yelp of terror. The touch. I don't want to betray you," said Mister Marvel, edging away from the direction of the fingers. Don't you go on thinking that. Whatever you do, all I want to do is to help you. Just. Tell me what I got to do, Lord. Whatever you want done, that I'm most willing to do. Ooh. Okay. Uh. All right. This actually leads to another chapter, so uh, I can't read four parts of it. So this is. Let's read the next chapter. Chapter ten. Mister Marvel's visit to Ipping. Iping. Ipping. <clears throat> After the first gusty panic had spent itself, Ipping became argumentative. Uh, no, 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 no. I think that's meant to be a comma in there. After the first gusty panic had spent itself, Ipping became argumentative. Skepticism suddenly reared its head. Rather nervous skepticism, not at all assured of its back, but skepticism, skepticism, skepticism. God, skepticism, nonetheless. <clears throat> 
skepticism of skepticism suddenly reared its head. Rather nervous skepticism, but not at all assured of its back, but skepticism, nevertheless. It is so much easier not to believe in an invisible man, and those who had actually seen him dissolve into air or felt the strength of his arms could be counted on the fingers of two hands. And of those witnesses, Mr. Wy- Mr. Wedgers? Wedgers? That's a name? Mr. Wedgers! Mr. Wedgers! Oh, you poor, poor man. That is a horrible, horrible name to live through life. I'm sorry, all the Wedgers out there, but that's... Wow. And of these witnesses, Mr. Wedgers was presently missing, having, re- having retired impregnably, 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 impregnably. Ooh, that's a, that's a, that's a bodily of a word. And there's no footnote next to it to, to say what it is. Having retired impregnably behind the bolts and bars of his own home, of his own house, and Jaffers lying stunned in the parlor of the coach and her horses. Great and strange ideas I ideas great and strange ideas transcending experience often have less ex- damn it mm. great and strange ideas transcending experience often have less effect upon men and women than smaller more tangible considerations Ipping was gay with bunting and everyone was in gala dress there's a footnote next to gala oh dear lord why is there a footnote next to gala gala fancy uh, okay. Was in was in gala dress. I I could I could have told. Uh, why is there a footnote? Why is there a footnote next to gala, but no footnote ne- next to impeg- impreg- impregnably impregnably? I mean, I know what the word means, but that seems to be a less common word than the word gala, unless most people don't use the word gala. I guess I don't know. No, 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 no. Whit Monday had been looked forward to for a month or more. By the afternoon, even those who believed in the unseen were beginning to resume their little amusements in a tentative, in a tentative fashion, on the supposition that he had gone, co- that he had quite gone away. And with the skeptics, he was already a jest. But people, skeptics and believers alike, were remarkably sociable all day. Okay, so. That was the first pass. That was not bad, apart from the pauses here and there. <clears throat> uh, most most of it for uh, the footnotes. And getting terrible towards the end with the words like impregnable, 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 impregnably, impregnably. Yeah, that that's not a word that flows very well. Not when said out loud. Um, <clears throat> but that was the first pass. We'll do a second pass. <clears throat> yes, I am. Thin air. You're looking through me. What? Ain't there any stuff to you? Box it. Uh, what is it? Uh, jabber. Uh, is it that? I am just a human being. Solid. Needing food and drink. Needing covering, too, but I'm invisible. You see, invisible. Simple idea, invisible. What? Real like? Yes, real. Let's have a hand of you, said Marvel. If you are real, it won't be so darn out of the way like that. Lord, he said. How you made me jump, gripping me like that. He felt the hand that had closed around his wrist with with his disengaged fingers, and his fingers went timorously up the arm patted a muscular chest, and explored a bearded face. Bearded face, and explored a bearded face. Marvel's face was astonishment. I'm dashed, he said. If this don't beat cockfighting, most remarkable. And there, I can see a rabbit clean through you half a mile away. Not a bit of you visible, except... He scrutinized the apparently empty space keenly. You haven't been eating bread and cheese, he asked, holding the invisible arm. You're quite right, and it's not quite assimilated into the system. Ah, said Mr. Marvel, sort of ghostly, though. Of course, all this isn't half so wonderful as you think. It's quite wonderful enough for my modest once, said Mr. Thomas Marvel, said Mr. Thomas Marvel. How'd you manage it? How the deuce is it done? 
It's too long a story, and besides, I tell you, the whole business fair beats me, said Mr. Marvel. What I want to say at present is this. I need help. I've come to that. I came upon you suddenly. I was wandering mad with rage, naked, impotent. I could have murdered, and I saw you. Lord, said Mr. Marvel, I came up behind you. Hesitated. Went on. Mr. Marvel's expression was eloquent. Then I stopped. No, there's no I in there. Then stopped. Here, I said, is an outcast like myself. This is the man for me. So I went back and came to you, you, and Lord, said, but I'm all in a dizzy. May I ask, how is it? and what you may be requiring in the way of help. Invincible! I want you to help me get clothes and shelter, and then with other things. I've left them long enough. If you won't, well, but you will. Must. Look here, said Mr. Marvel. I'm too flabbergasted. Don't knock me about anymore and leave me go. I must get steady a bit. And you've pretty near broken my toe. It's all unreasonable. Empty downs, empty sky, nothing visible for miles except the bosom of nature. And then comes a voice, a voice out of heaven, and stones, and a fist. Lord! Pull yourself together, said the voice, for you have, a, for you have to do the job I've chosen for you. Mr. Marvel blew out his cheeks, and his eyes were round. I've chosen you, said the voice. You are the only man except some of those fools down there who knows that there is such a thing as an invisible man. You have to be my helper. Help me, and I will do great things for you. An invisible man is a man of power. He stopped for a moment to sneeze violently. But if you betray me, he said, if you fail to do as I direct you. He paused and tapped Mr. Marvel's shoulder smartly. Mr. Marvel gave a yelp of terror at the touch. I don't want to betray you, said Mr. Marvel, edging away from the direction of the fingers. Now, don't you go a-thinking that, whatever you do. All I want to do is help you. Just tell me what I got to do, Lord. Whatever you want done, that I'm most willing to do. And now, Chapter 10. Mr. Marvel's Visit to Ipping After the first gusty panic had spent itself, Ipping became argumentative. Skepticism suddenly reared its head, rather nervous skepticism, not at all assured of its back, but skepticism, nevertheless. It is so much easier not to believe in an invisible man, and those who had actually seen him dissolve into air or felt the strength of his arm could be counted on the fingers of two hands. And of these witnesses, Mr. Wadges was presently missing, having retired, having retired impregnably behind the bolts and bars of his own house, and Jaffers lying stunned in the parlor of the coach and the horses. Great and strange ideas trend. Uh, sorry, great and strange ideas transcending experience often have less effect upon men and women than smaller, more tangible considerations. Ipping was gay with bunting, and everybody was in gala dress. Whit Monday I'd been looking forward to for a month <clears throat> Whit Monday I'd been looked forward to for a month or more. By the afternoon, even those who believed in the unseen were beginning to resume their little amusements in a tentative fashion, on the supposition that he had gone, sorry, on the supposition that he had quite gone away, and with the skeptics he was already a jest. But today, skeptics and believers alike were remarkably, were remarkably social, were remarkably sociable all day, were remarkably sociable all day. Okay. All right. That's, that's good enough, I think. That's, 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 that's pretty good. Um, yeah. Gonna leave it on a second pass, I think. 
Yeah, that sounds good. That that was pretty good, I think. All right, so that was uh, day 38 with the, the Time Machine and the Invisible Man by H.G. Wells, although I just read the Invisible Man part. And uh, we will continue on with the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen week. Ah, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen week uh, with another book tomorrow, with another that fits into that um, sort of timeline kind of thing. All right, then. Hope you enjoyed that. See you then.